Mountain bikes and e-bikes that are designed to be ridden off-road can and possibly will fail at some point whilst you're out on your ride. It could be something simple like a flat tire or something more major like a derailleur broken off or a broken spoke. But what about the things that could possibly fail on your e-mountain bike? Well, here's a list of a few things that might catch you out. Your e-mountain bike has a series of wires and leads that connects all those electrical components together. This is otherwise known as the harness. Now the harness requires a really good connection and of course a complete circuit, allowing all those electrical co components to work in harmony. Now inevitably things can happen to that harness, wires can break and that will obviously stop your bike working. Here's a couple of examples of those leads that could possibly break. On a Shimano system, a lead can pull out the back of the head unit in a crash, especially if your bars spin around. Now this is mostly a simple plug and play back into the corresponding port on the back of the display. However, if that wire snaps or breaks, it's time to replace the lead, I'm afraid. Problems can occur with a magnet that monitors that rear wheel movement on your bike. An older and cheaper bike, sometimes you can have that magnet mounted on the spokes. Now these can get misaligned or get dirty and not give you a speed reading from that back wheel. Not such a problem with these uh, disc mounted magnets, but whatever you do, you just need to make sure that's clean and within parameters to get that rear wheel movement correct. Another lead that can potentially fail on your e-mountain bike is the wire that runs from your motor down to the speed sensor on the rear of the bike. Now this monitors and relays all that information from your rear wheel back to the software in the bike. Now, if you've got this wire mounted externally on your chain stay, it can get damaged by trail debris or even get snagged in the suspension linkage. So if you've got no speed reading coming from your rear wheel, then this is probably your likely culprit. The motor on your e-mountain bike is a sealed unit that's warranted for many miles of fun on your e-mountain bike. Now you can check the health of these by, by yourself via the app that goes with your bike or taking them to an authorized dealer center. If your motor does stop on your bike, it can be down to many reasons. It could be something like a bearing or a belt snapped in your motor, and that's gonna cause an horrendous noise with no drive whatsoever. Or it could be something more like software developed a fault, and that means your bike could stop without no reason in the middle of nowhere. And some motors are actually really clever. They can tell whether you've been tampering with the motor. Say for instance, if you wanted to de-restrict your bike, it will pick up that you've been messing with the software and possibly shut the motor down too. And also things such as sensors, well, they can lead to failure too. A torque sensor will shut that motor down, as will a bad connection in a lead. All these little things could possibly be the cause of you not having a working e-mountain bike. And most motor forts will flag up an error code which will be displayed upon your head unit. It'll usually be a load of beeping going on and a flashing up of a code. Now you need to note down this code and go back to either your owner handbook and check out what it means, or maybe even Google it to get to the bottom of it. And sometimes yep you can get around it with a simple on off and restart on your bike but you need to find the root of that problem because I guarantee it will strike you at the worst time possible. The chain on your e-mountain bike definitely has a very, very hard life. And let's face it, it probably has a lot more torque going through it and subject to a lot more aggro than a standard mountain bike. Now you mix in a little bit of rust, bad maintenance, shift in a load of gears under, under load, bad chain lines, or maybe a rock strike on that technical climb, then it probably is gonna break at some point. Now this one's a real easy one to save. All you need is a basic chain tool and a quick link. All we're doing for this is breaking the chain into two blunt ends, putting that quick link in place, snapping it back in, and off you go. Most bikes and batteries have pretty good protection against the elements these days, but one thing that could catch you out is a battery connection issue. Now this is particularly true if you ride in really harsh conditions or perhaps you remove your battery from your bike regularly to charge it. Things such as water and trail debris can all cause connection issues, so it's vital to stay on top of the cleanliness of where your battery terminal connects. Now a quick spray of water dispersant spray and a wipe around with a clean cloth will keep most systems happy. And another one to look out for is your charge port. Now these can cause problems, particularly if you've got a magnetic connection. These chargers and the battery itself can pick up metal swarf and debris from around your workshop. And of course, not forgetting your charge charge port cover, make sure that's clear of debris too.
you can set on the rear of your bike will wear over time. Now this could be just a few hundred miles or it could be many thousands. Now this is all down to how well you look after your drivetrain on your bike, how and where and often you ride your bike and of course the initial quality of that component at the start. With a worn chain and cassette, you're gonna get a lot of jumping and skipping around coming from those gears, particularly when you're on the smaller teeth on the cassette, the smaller cogs. This is particularly under load, for instance, when you're sprinting on the road, you're gonna get a lot of banging and cracking coming around from this area. Now, the best way to look after your cassette is to look after the chain that wraps itself around it. Now, when it comes to the chain, you want to be degreasing it, lubing it, and cleaning it after every single ride, so it's in the best condition it possibly can be and of course using a chain checker to check the stretch of that chain to replace that chain as and when it says to because it's a lot cheaper to replace a chain than it is to replace your cassette. So there we go, a few things that might catch you out on your e-mountain bike, but as ever, get involved in the comments box down below. Let us know what's let you down on your e-mountain bike because the sun's up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN and I shall see you on the trails.